här är bad ass som fan. Vad är det? Okay, so uh, Sweden has very stupid gun laws when it comes to hunting rifles and uh, one of them is that uh, semi-auto rifles are regulated in a way that makes it so it's awkward to get a license for them and uh, one of the things they've done is you can't have a folding stock, you can't have a telescoping stock and it has to look like a traditional hunting rifle so we have fashion laws regarding hunting rifles, especially semi-autos pump action uh, shotguns and, and uh, rifles etc. So there's only a few models of firearms that's available for hunters when they want a semi-auto rifle that's actually kind of modern and one of them is what we're going to talk about in this video with my friend here and it's called the Browning Bar Match. Yeah so that's the reason why you might want to get a Browning Bar Match. And uh, yeah, do you want to tell us why the Browning Bar Match is a good fit if you want a modern rifle? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, basically, I'm a hog hunter. Uh, so what I want is something that has a great ability to do a follow-up shot. Because uh, when you have shot the hog, uh, it's, all, it's not always that you kill it on the first shot. And then you have to pursue the animal and it will basically attack you. So if you get run by a big hog, we can weigh like 150 kilos, you want to be able to drop it. And the repeater uh, rifle is not very suitable for it. So you want a very, very reliable semi-automatic semi rifle. And the Browning bar has a really, really good mechanism. It's gas operated and basically it, it never, never fails. It has very, very, very few stoppages. Also, I'm... Um, I'm interested in long range uh, shooting as well. So uh, I wanted something that has uh, a good match barrel. I'm a big guy, so I don't mind carrying a heavy rifle. And I wanted something that has, has good ergonomics, both for hunting and for long range shooting. So I browsed the market and looked at everything from HNK, Hainel, uh, everything that can possibly look at and found that uh, the Browning bar match had the highest potential. Uh, but the ergonomics was really, really bad. It has a traditional look, so basically the recoil makes uh, that you have, uh, your, your barrel rises very much in each shot. And I wanted a rifle that, where the recoil, uh, the, the force goes straight into your shoulder instead, so you keep the dot on your target when you're doing a follow-up shot. Yeah, uh, so <clears throat> it has the traditional hunting stock that you would see yeah. in a rifle from the first world war basically yes so <clears throat> uh, what you're talking about is called inline recoil so you have the barrel and you want the stock to continue exactly yes. after the bore of the barrel basically yeah so the recoil goes straight into your shoulder so the ar-15 for example is a very good example of a rifle made like this the ak-47 is an example of a rifle that does not do it like that <laughs> at least the traditional <laughs> one but the ar-15 is very good with recoil handling and that's mainly because of the inline recoil and that's more of an accident than, than purposely because they have the it has the recoil spring in the stock and all that so how do you make it so uh, it has an inline recoil the browning bar match well uh I, of course, we have internet, and, mm -hmm. and I looked around a lot, and I found that there was one guy in the States that had made an adapter for a Mossberg. I believe it was actually a stock intended for a Mossberg, and he made a little adapter where he removed the original stock and put on a Mossberg stock. It, it was a Magpul Mossberg stock, I believe. And uh, he actually solved all the problems. That, found, that, that were with the gun when it comes to the inline recoil handling. And, and I mean, if you look at any modern firearm today that, that is really good, it's a really good shooter, it has the inline recoil yeah. ergonomics. Yeah, every, um, every long range rifle you see made nowadays yeah. have it, yeah. for example. Yeah, and, and also that was the problem with the, this rifle in particular. It, it, had, it, it, it had a really, really good barrel. But the handguard was not free floating. Yeah. It was mounted 
exactly like a G3 or similar construction. Yeah, clamp to the barrel, right? Yeah. So, so uh, you want a free floating barrel that's only attached to the receiver because if you disturb the barrel, you disturb the barrel harmonics and that will change the point of impact slightly perhaps. But especially if you want to take like a, a shot from a bipod, if you have a bipod yeah. attached to a handguard that's attached to the barrel and uh, then you're going to load the bipod, lean into it and that will put a lot of pressure on the barrel. And it's perfectly fine if you are a wizard and manage to load the bipod exactly the same amount each time and zero the rifle to that but that's that's of course ridiculous no no one's that good uh, yeah. so you want a free floating barrel yeah so how did how did that how did you solve that, that no, yeah, we, 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 we realized the problem where we were seeing like a shift in between 8 to 12 centimeters in the point of impact shifts when we preloaded the bipod at 100 meters that's really yeah, that's really much, much. And that if you want to do some kind of long range shooting, not for hunting, obviously, but for target shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then, OK, we're back. Got a phone call anyway. So um, where was I? Uh, if you want to do any kind of long range shooting. Yeah, of course. So uh, a deviance of eight centimeters at 100 meters is only going to increase exponentially. And it's uh, and it's not uh, it's not going to be the exact same eight centimeters or whatever all the time either, since it's dependent on how you handle the bipod. So yeah, so it's basically a nightmare to shoot a long range. Yeah. So we realize we need we need a free floating barrel. We need a good stock. Um, but the first thing that we needed was, was the stock. We felt that uh, like th this is the priority. So I, I basically I started a Facebook group uh, for this weapon, and uh, I, I invited a lot of guys which I know are like gun wizards. And I, I dropped the problem out there and said, like, guys, we need to solve this. This is how some guys have done it. And this is what we could do. This is the thing that we need. Explain the physics about things, like how we wanted to create an inline recoil. And uh, how we could possibly mount a free-floating handguard. And there was a lot of discussions, like, how should we actually do this? And there was... Um, I mean, we, we, we went through everything in that Facebook group. And there was this guy called Dennis Hussell who picked up the challenge. And he is a really good mechanic. And he has the CNC emails and stuff like that. And he started to uh, come up with CAD drawings. And I was like, hey, guys, how, what do you think about this? And we were like, yeah, change this or that a little bit and it will be fine. He was like, yeah, going back through draw hall. And after a while, he, came, he started to show prototypes. And it looked really, 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 really good. Yeah. And, and I was like, uh, some some changes done. Uh, and it was a back and forth relationship between the Facebook group and, the, and this uh, guy. You know, it's a company called Infitech where you can buy all the stuff. Uh, and uh, basically what he came up first with first was an adapter, which made it possible then to put on any AR uh, buttstock. That's nice because then you have options. Yeah. So one thing we could we can all say immediately is, if you're going to use it at the shooting range for target shooting, you can actually have a telescoping stock on it, but you are not allowed to hunt with a telescoping stock. No. And at the shooting range as well, you're allowed to have magazines that are larger than what's allowed for uh, hunting as well. But uh, the, 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 one of the things people have used this rifle for is, uh, so, so it's very difficult to get a license for a semi-auto rifle for IPSC shooting, for, for example. So if you want to do, so this is shamed in 308, I'm not sure we mentioned that, <laughs> but uh, that's major division. So if you want to do IPSC shooting, major division, and, uh, and want to get started immediately, it takes two years to, to get a, a license for a firearm for IPSC and it, that's only if you do everything correctly which is hard they're kind of stingy with the licensing there anyway so if you want to go out placing immediately and you have your credentials fixed safety courses and all that you can use this rifle and it's competitive actually yeah so uh, there's that and also if you have an agronomic modern rifle you're going to take better hunting shots as well, obviously. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you shoot the rifle today, when you have changed out the stock and you changed out the, the grip, you can, you can customize the length of pull to your body yeah. much, much, much better. And, the, and that, that's something that everybody does to a hunter rifle. If you're a serious hunter, you will go to your gunsmith and you will customize your stock yeah. and make sure that you have something that is appropriate for your body. And, yeah, and this people is, are different. This some people yeah. are short with uh, long arms, some people are long with short arms or whatever. <laughs> and yeah, not, not every opinion. rifle, yeah, yeah <laughs> you're a monkey. Anyway, yeah, exactly. uh, not, not, not all people are made the same, basically. No, not So, at all. yeah, that's why most uh, sport shooting rifles have a uh, cheek rest that's adjustable, length of pull that's adjustable, and all, everything. So yeah, but that's very naughty uh, while you're hunting, apparently, according to our betters. So yeah, uh, what you can do with this is, for example, what you've done, you put a fixed stock on it, which fits you yeah. very well. There are other variants of fixed stocks as well. Then you can use it for both hunting and target shooting without having yeah, to exactly. change stocks or whatever all the time. Yeah, I'm a fairly lazy person. I, I, I wouldn't like swap stocks for uh, every kind of use. And also I'm a firm believer that when you have a gun, you should you should tailor it to your person and use it a lot and make sure it it goes on muscle member. Yeah. Because when you hunt with it, it's like you, you don't have time to figure out things. You, yeah. you need to shoot with a rifle that you that is like a an extension of yourself, basically. Yeah. Anyone who's ever hunted knows that uh, when you see the moose or the pig or yeah. hog or whatever in the sights, your your heart rate is going up a bit <laughs> and the right. adrenaline is just pumping. And then, uh, so it's like every other situation like that. You you fail down to your level of training, basically. Yeah. And uh, and then the training sets in. And if you've trained well, then then you're fine. But uh, not if not, then you're just gonna wound the animal or yeah. do any, something stupid. Uh, and we don't want that. We want uh, good shooters, good hunters, ethical hunters, etc. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but I mean, the result of this um, stock adapter was that we finally had a rifle with an with an inline recoil, and it's yeah. so it's a really 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 soft shooter. It's yeah. one of the softest uh, 308s I've ever used in my life. Uh, does it have a adjustable gas block as well? I don't remember. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you tune it. So so that's very good. Then you can tune it to your load. So yeah. what I usually do when I tune a gas block. So it takes gas out of the barrel to cycle the action, basically. And if it gets too much gas, like if you have a suppressor on it or something and it gets more gas, then it's going to beat itself to death and throw the empty casings to the next uh, municipality. And uh, yeah, it's going to be harder to handle when it kicks more. So yeah. if you can tune it, just tune it. So it just cycles the action, then give it a bit more gas for, uh, so it definitely works, even if mm -hmm. fouled. And then you're set. Uh, that's uh, that's really good to be able to do that. So, so uh, the tunable gas block is that a factory thing or is that a mod? It's a factory thing, okay. but it's also yeah, that's very, very important. Good. That's very good. Yeah. So that's yeah. very important. If it wasn't uh, uh, from factory, then you would have to do it basically. So yeah. If you're but doing anything uh, to your rifle, if it's semi-auto, you basically need to tune the gas, especially if you change barrel length, put suppressors on it, etc. This particular rifle is really sensitive for it as well. It will basically slam the mechanism into pieces if you, if you, oh, yes, it's, it's um, the, the accelerated wear is what you will have. Yeah. And it, we have seen rifles basically be turned into rubbish on a thousand shots yeah. when people have been doing this the wrong way and basically overgassed it like crazy. I mean, it's, it is a piston and it's, it's, uh, it's sensitive, definitely. When yeah, it's, not, it's, it's very rugged construction, but it can't take any beating. Yeah, it's the same with... Uh, I had the same thing happen to me before I got the KNS uh, piston, which is adjustable for my AK. Mm. Uh, I, sh I always shoot all my rifles suppressed if I can, and I shot mm. that suppressed without having an adjustable gas system, and it beat the trigger mechanism to death. Uh, so, uh, but with the adjustable gas piston, it's not an issue anymore. No, no, it's a really, really important thing to take note of with all, all piston rifles, definitely. Yeah, even direct impingement can, 
is fine, like a regular AR-15 direct impingement. It doesn't have a piston, it just poops the gas into the system mm. and that sh cycles it. So there you can uh, tune it with uh, different springs and, uh, and uh, weights and stuff to cycle mm. the way you want it. So uh, any, any semi-auto rifle that you're messing about with uh, needs to be tuned basically. Uh, and it's good if you can tune it anyway because of different loads and all that. Yeah, so... Uh, How's your Before rifle I'm... working right now? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's really, really nice actually. It's I'm I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. We, we, when we had the the butts, uh, the, the stock done, we went into trying to make a forend for it, a handguard. And this handguard is that that is more uh, Dennis' uh, own construction. Uh, we basically had things we said like uh, think about this, think about that. But what we came, what he came up with in the in the end was uh, basically a handguard with M-lock slots, and it was uh, very um, we call it rectangular. Yeah, it's a good it's a really good grip to hold. It's, it's thin. Yeah, it was a good uh, circumference. <laughs> so yeah, you could, yeah, you could see clamp it without any issues. Uh, I, yeah. I tried it. I, if you, I'll probably run the video after this, or if I did before. Uh, yeah, it was very nice to hold on to. I like yeah. it. And you can and, bolt uh, whatever you need to it. If you're yeah, if you're well, looking yeah. for a wounded animal or something, you can just put the light on it directly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's really, really important to have good mounting points. Like yeah. if you want to run a bike or if you want to run a, a weapon light or something, we we always run weapon lights when we hog hunt here in Sweden. Yeah. It's completely legal now. And and like um, the first. The first uh, version of the forend was uh, had uh, well, uh, the the mount for the forend wasn't really good, so it started to flex. Um, but we sent it back to Dennis and told him about, about the problem and uh, like gave him a few ideas, and he came back with something even better. It, so basically, the the version I have now is, is the second version of the forend uh, mounting options. And it's it's as rigid as an AR-10. Yeah, AR it was 10, rock AR solid. Yeah. Yeah. So, so so now it's 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 done. It's really 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 nice. Yeah. I suggest we try to load some ammunition for your rifle and see what kind of groupings we can get as a best case oh, scenario. Goodness. Because he told me of a, a, a friend of ours who's a really, really good shooter who shot his uh, own handloads through it and got like tiny groups or whatever. <laughs> So, that was insane. <laughs> do you remember about uh, the size of the grouping he got? Well, he, the, the thing was how he did those groups. Yeah, yeah, but he, because he's, because, he's, because he's, I mean, if 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 you're sitting at a bench, bench rest position and then you shoot like uh, one one and a half centimeter at a hundred meter, then you're yeah, okay, definitely you're good. But, I mean, this guy did it like. <laughs> he was standing PR yeah. style and we, he, he was just like throwing off and I was like ah, I have so much learned. <laughs> yeah, you should start shooting PRS. Uh, so yeah, I'm getting the high nl 6.5 rifle for PRS matches. So uh, if this rifle uh, manages to get decent groupings with some hand loads, you could probably join me. I really hope to. That would yeah. be so much fun. So if you can help me with that, I'll be really happy. Yeah, we'll uh, do some. Uh, I'll do some theory crafting in uh, in um, my software's what's it called? It is called. Let's see here. Quick load. My memory. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> so I can theory craft a, a good amount in quick load, and, and we can do some trials. Perfect. Anything else we should mention before we turn off? I think we covered the most of it. It's, it's just if if you wanna. Something that's on a side note is like if you if you use this rifle for ipsic shooting, it's really really hard to do really good times because the magwell is really really tight, so you can't reload it fast yeah, it unless you're free. a wizard. So uh, the mags don't drop for free; you have to rip them out. Yeah, they, no, no, they, they drop free, okay. but when you're going to insert it, it's like uh, it's like an MP5 but harder. Okay, so it's you have really, to insert really it on an open bolt. Uh, yeah, you can leave it. You, you, you can leave it open, definitely. But when we try to insert the mag, the magwell is so thin; it has no flaring at all. Ah, I understand. So when you try to insert, it's, it's uh, usually you see on the IPTEC match it's like. <laughs> yeah, so it's like an MP5. Again. Then the MP5 had just a, a thin yeah. sheet metal. So, exactly. So in MP5, you have to lock up the bolt, 
rip out the magazine with a paddle release, take the yeah. next magazine and manage to hit exactly right or you'll miss and injure yourself or something. <laughs> and then uh, anyway, slap, the, yeah. slap the bolt down and then you're ready to go. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah. it's uh, ridiculous uh, compared to more modern designs when it comes to mag yeah. changes, but yeah. Here it's 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 not it's not any risk that you injure yourself, but but I've seen very few people being able to do a quick re reloads, and also the the bolt uh, release and such is not uh, it's not made for being a quick reloader. It's it's a hunting rifle basically. You're gonna end up but, designing a new receiver for that rifle. I, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. If more people buy this rifle, it's more incentive to make cool shit for it. So uh, go out and buy it. It's uh, totally worth your money. If uh, you have a hunting exam and need a very good rifle. Okay, well, I guess we're done here for now. Have fun. Do you have a bolt release in? Yes. Det blir inte tuffare i jaktbössen så här. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Modern.